Hey guys, what's up? How we doing? Sherpa here, Sherpa baby. The YouTube portfolio manager, the first best and only to ever do it. It's Chase at Ever Bullish. Um, I have a new microphone. Thank you for all the feedback from everybody out there. I do care about the content I'm putting out there. So, so um, I just wanted to step this shit up for you. Uh, I'm a trader first. I'm running this company second. Um, but the main point is I'm giving you free content and helping you become a better investor. Uh, I'm feeling zinned out today, baby. I'm feeling good. I'm loving it. We're telling the future as it happens. What we did last week was incredible. Um, it, it does bear mentioning that uh, we called it. We took agency of our own investments, which is the ever bullish mission. Um, we made money in a down market and we called it. We told you it was going to happen and we did it and it happened. And now we're going to take advantage of it. Step on their neck, make that money back on the upside. Um, I, I free will all these videos, but this one is actually a second and I'm, I'm a little I'm, I'm feeling zen but I'm a little bit fired up only because uh, I made about a 30 minute video and my phone just stopped recording I don't know if it has to do with the microphone or if it's just a dumb boomer tech thing that I'm not aware of because uh, I'm not great at this stuff but uh, let's get to it it's not about me it's about you it's about your trades let's fucking get on the train and go all right um, July 18 2020 everbullish.com go to everbullish.com fire it up in your browser everbullish.com subscribe to the free newsletter buy one of the portfolios premium portfolios we'll get to that in a minute um, donate a cup of coffee to the cause every bit of information I'm giving you is gonna make you more um, you know than probably 10 to 100 times simple cup of coffee for old boy alright no more begging let's go to it July 18th, Sunday. I've got the British Open in the background. I'm about to go for a jog. Um, this is why we trade so we don't have to work. We don't have to get our boss's boss rich. We don't have to click buttons. Um, we don't have to do nonsense and bure bureaucratic bullshit. Um, because we are bulls. And with that, we are bulls. And good afternoon, it is. And happy Sunday, bulls. Um, I sense nothing but uncertainty in the stock market this week going forward. There's nothing but uncertainty. Um, we've got, uh, you know, we've got the Fed basically um, trying to alleviate growth fears, and then we've got inflation it rearing it, it, its ugly, nasty head. Um, the average investor out there is scared. Uh, that is when we make our money, but that's when we also just have to make easy trades. Let it be easy. Follow what's happening. Um, you know, it, when the market is most efficient. Uh, is when it's most difficult to make trades when liquidity is inefficient. That's the biggest thing. Uh, that's why I don't believe in efficient market hypothesis. That's neither here nor there. Um, the market is efficient. Everybody's bullish on uh, you know growth. That's when stock selection doesn't really matter as much. When we're in choppy times, that's when having a good captain at the ship matters the most. So we have inflation worries on the Libra scale. We've got we've got uh, growth fears on the other side. I don't care. I'm going to play both. Here's how we're going to do it. Remember this headline from last week. This is still lingering. It's a headline from last week. I took it from Market Watch. Um, it's this thing. So we need it. And, um, and then I've got the heat map for you. So if you look at the heat map, the reason I'm beating this into your head is heat maps are the easiest way to go. All right, where's silly money, dumb money, stupid money? Where's liquidity going? Who's selling and what are they selling? If you look at the heat map, we see that NVIDIA was down 4.25%. We see that Apple was down 1.5%. Amazon was down 1.5%. Tesla was down 1%. This is all just on the end of the week. Um, they were down significantly more uh, through that. And by the way, when you're on Stockmaster and you just click this, it'll now pull that up on the right side of the stock screen. Stockmaster app, go get it if you don't have it. Um, real simple. Real simple. Follow the signs. SOXL 3X on semiconductor is a no-brainer. It, it might not be the right time. It will be the time, right time at some point. Th companies like NVIDIA, companies like Apple, Amazon, AMD, Micron, MU, um, Intel, Microsoft, so forth. Those companies aren't hitting their all-time high today or on Thursday. They didn't hit their all-time high. They still got room to run. Buy SOXL three times semiconductor. It's a no-brainer. We're going to look at sector performance last week, guys. Um, utilities was up 3% last week. Consumer staples was up 1.25. Real estate, oh, fuck it. Oh, hey, real estate. Real estate was up um, basically flat, half a percent. Healthcare was down flat. 
uh, semiconductor, I'm sorry, uh, consumer services, communication services was flat, IT was flat, industrials was down one, financials was down two, consumer discretionary down 2.6, energy down 7.7. .7. Hey Chase, energy was down 7.7. .7. How come my CPE was down over 25%? That's what we exploit. That's the literal definition of leverage. Certain amount of risk, greater amount of return. Certain amount of risk, greater amount of loss. Um, this, this is the beauty. This is what we exploit. This is exactly what we want. This is the button we want to press. It's right there in front of you with a big red circle around it. Just hit it. Um, look at energy. Oil prices dropped 5%. Uh, the broad sector was down 12%. This is a disconnect. So the broad sector being down 12%, this is on the month now, um, only halfway through. The broad sector is down 12%. This is the disconnect you exploit. Is an example of the leverage that I speak about. Live last leverage, right? You got this from the last week's video. You can tell how lazy I am. I didn't even move it. Live, laugh, leverage. The leverage I'm talking about is how you can invest in one thing follow the, the price of another. When the price of the other moves 1%, yours moves 5%, 8%, 10%. Um, thus, stressing the importance of following commodity prices. If you just follow these prices, it tells you what's gonna happen. It's that easy. Um, ask your advisor if he can tell you what a barrel of oil costs and if he can tell you what index he prefers to follow when it comes to a, a barrel of oil. Ask him to look it up in front of you. I'll give you 100 bucks if he can do it. Ask them the difference between light, sweet, crude, and Brent crude, West Texas Intermediate. Ask them these type of things. Um, he doesn't give a shit. He's just trying to click the right buttons to make his boss happy. I'm bullish on banks. FAS moved up pretty decent on bad tape. Um, GS, long-term hold. Goldman Sachs doesn't lose money, right? Uh, SoFi, SoFi Lending Club. This is kind of the pawn shop of the investment in uh, the financial services industry. Uh, and I like it for that reason. If the market turns bad, the pawn shops are going to make money. The private prison systems are going to make money. The casinos are going to make money. Uh, the vice stocks. Philip Morris is going to make money. Um, Anheuser-Busch, InBev, going to make money. Okay, crude. Crude moved down. Crude moved down to 71 a barrel. These companies I mentioned before make money at 70 a barrel. Um, companies like CPE make money at $43 a barrel. You with me? Leverage. Um, still bullish on ERX. If you don't own it, buy it now. If you don't, uh, if you already own it, don't sweat it. And if it moves down, buy more of it. Devin, DVN, and Fang, both long-term holders, both swing trades, both day trades. I want to do an experiment. Check out the price of DVN and Fang at about 11 o'clock Eastern, and then look at it at about one o'clock Eastern. Buy it at 11, sell at one in your hypo, or do it in real life. That's what I'm going to do. Um, these things move up like clockwork. Let the market freak out. Let the uh, retail investors sell their stuff. Buy a clip of 1%. It's an easy scout. Um, you're welcome for that one. By the way, back on. Back on big time CPE and MRO. CPE is a wildcatting company. They're going out there. They're finding oil and natural gas. They've got leases from 1,000 years ago. They've got prefract. They've got horizontal drilling. They've got all this shit going on. you got MRO over here. MRO is over here um, refining and producing it. Um, they're complete opposites. You got the upstream and the downstream, whichever one. I always forget. 12 years in Houston, I still can't remember. Um, doesn't matter. If you buy them both at the same time, you're going to be all right. Um, you're going to be better than all right for that leverage that I spoke of before. So CPE, MRO, buy one, buy the other, buy both. It's a combo trade, super bullish. Almost a double, almost a double buy. Um, sure, baby. Uh, biotech, lab you, edit. Not done talking about it. Edit is probably one of my favorite companies in the entire uh, in the entire market. Um, regardless of index, regardless of purpose, Edit is the type of company that can essentially figure out a way in the future from a humanistic perspective to cut out genes that cause us to suffer. That's it. I just think that that's the truth. I don't know why you wouldn't want to invest in that. If I was giving you this pitch in a boardroom right now, you'd want to invest in it too. Uh, and that's a number, that's a huge reason for it. Sometimes you got to follow your gut. Remember, Peter Lynch, invest what you like. Um, and I just think the humanist approach of it also keeps it better off from an ESG perspective than a lot of other companies. LabVIEW, every time it hits underneath 60, buy it. It'll be up in the 70s in a couple of months, and we'll all be laughing about when it hits 85. Um, LabVIEW, it's the engineer portfolio. If you want to make money, just buy LabVIEW this week. It'll go up.
Forget everything I'm telling you. Just buy Lab View on Monday at, let's say, 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock my time. Okay. Um, I'm going to brag here on a minute. Uh, and no, it's not my portfolio performance. Uh, turn off the trades. So this is from last week. This is a repost. I said, I'm going to turn off the trades until after the shit hits the fan. Did you know it's easy that, that easy? Did you know trading can be that easy? Hey, we've got a Fed meeting coming up. Hey, we've got consumer uh, CPI numbers coming up. Uh, hey, uh, core CPI is going through the freaking roof. It's, it's building year over year. We're coming out of a pandemic. Everybody wants to get out of the house and they're going to be buying a bunch of stuff and companies are exploiting that. Um, do we think that maybe we want to hedge our portfolio a little bit after we're bouncing off of all time highs over the last 11 years? If your answer is no, get off my channel. Uh, it is that easy. I'm going to pull up the market map again. We got Nvidia, we got Apple, we got Amazon. When you look at these market maps, I want you to think about this as a, um, let's call it a football field. Let's pretend that you, you're, you're Peyton Manning, you're uh, Tom Brady, you're Drew Brees. Let's use Drew Brees. You're Drew Brees, you're sitting back there and you realize that they don't have a safety in the corner. And you got your big Marquez Colston. I'm going back in the day. You got Marcus Colston on the, you know, playing uh, wide out on the far, on your left side. Uh, you gonna yell a hot route? I'm gonna yell a hot route. Um, if you're Peyton Manning, you're gonna yell Omaha, whatever you know that means. You're just gonna throw it to the guy. The market is showing you what players aren't in what position, and all you gotta do is throw it, throw the ball. Let it be easy. Let it be an easy trade. Scalp, scalp, scalp. You want to make money this week? Scalp, scalp. Um, we've got SOXL, SQ. By the way, we're going to talk more about that. We've got Apple. We've got Amazon. Still bullish. Oh, we got NVIDIA. We've got AMAT. Just dropped, right? Still bullish. These are going to be easy scalps. The most important thing here is that it's going to be when you get in. That's why I like trading hedged. I buy shorty. I think the market's going to go down. I buy it with a small amount of my portfolio, though it controls a lot, three times that amount of my portfolio. I'm going to buy it. If it goes, if the market goes down like I think it does, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to use that money to buy into NVIDIA, Applied Materials, SQ, Apple, Amazon, or SOXL. Depending upon your level of risk, it's that easy. Come with me. Let's get to the top. Bitcoin, $31. Bitcoin fell. Didn't expect that. I still like it better than SPY. Um, we're going to get straight to this because I've got it all written down here for you. ETHE, Bitcoin, uh, I'm sorry, Grayscale, Ethereum trust. If you want to beat the market next month, I would put anything against this. I would say, or on this, I would say that Ethereum does better than the S&P 500 for the next month. If you don't agree with me, got it. But just note that I said that. Um, this is a combo play. This is gut. This is DeFi. This is big players. This is Dorsey. This is Musk. This is Kathy. I'm trying to speak slowly for you guys. Um, it's hard. So this is Kathy. This is Dorsey. This is Musk. This is big money. This is DeFi. This is people getting behind the revolution of not letting companies, countries, currencies, commodities, um, geopolitics, um, dogma influence the, whether or not their currency stays stable or changes overnight. Um, this affects everything. And it's finally coming to the head where we've got big players getting behind it um this couldn't be more clear so not trying to sell anybody on crypto if you don't want it don't trade it i don't trade utilities i don't trade materials they're boring as shit. if you feel the same way don't don't trade it but this is the future um and not only is it the future but it's going to help I, I believe it's another it's going to help um and, uh, and macros right now macroeconomics are just pushing us right in this direction so just follow don't even sweat it um, so on that, Ethereum, super, super bullish. Uh, if I had some extra cash that I didn't want to do anything with right now, instead of holding it, and I am, this is again, high risk, it, very high risk. Instead of holding it in a bank account, I put it in Ethereum. That's how much I believe it. Remember, it's the feed stock to crypto. It's not the actual crypto. So that's, that's the main point here. Um, it is the barrel of oil per Exxon, which... In this case, the barrel of oil would be the Ethereum, or the, the oil inside the barrel would be the Ethereum. The Bitcoin would be the Exxon. That's about as clear as mud, right? <laughs> All right, earnings calendar. We're going to speed this up. IBM, PPG, dividend payers, right? Ally next day. Ally Tuesday. We got Ally Bank. We got Netflix. Um, 
Next day, we've got Coca-Cola, another dividend pair. Johnson & Johnson, another dividend pair. Verizon, another dividend pair. Holding of the ever bullish dividend portfolio, by the way. Uh, we got Discover Card, which I love. Add that to your list, by the way. Discover Card is fantastic. Snapchat, creepy, weird. I'm just a boomer. I don't fully understand social media. As you can tell, if you follow me, I don't really get it, but I'm trying. American Express, another dividend payer. Honeywell, another dividend payer. Crocs, we got all kinds of stuff this week. I believe this is going to uh, open up the sectors that we want to be in and tell us exactly where to go. These are the leading indicators on the laggers that we're trading. Simple, simple, simple. This is the trading strategy, guys. This is normally where I say this is my best bet and my option. I'm not doing that. This is the strategy I'm going to be using. If you use, um, you'll be better off than if you didn't do this strategy. The plan is as follows. This is a Monday trade. Rare Sherpa Monday trade. Hate Mondays. Don't like trading on Mondays. I love Mondays because they tell me where the market's going, but I normally don't trade on Mondays. This is going to be a Monday morning, 940, uh, 940 Central Time, uh, 1040 Eastern Time trade, okay? Very simple. Write this down. 20% shorty, 20% SOXL, 20% up. That's the company that I like so much, UP. Um, it's wheels up. 20% wheels up, 20% CPE, Callum Petroleum, um, for the reasons I mentioned before, and also LabVIEW. If the non-shorts, three, four-fifths of the portfolio, if the bottom four stocks on this, right here, go down, my shorty will be up roughly three times that. Sell it, rebuy it, what's down? That's that easy. That's the strategy this week. Uh, my last video, I told you went 30 minutes. <laughs> Freaking lost it. I hate doing this twice. Um, but uh, there it is. It's shorty. No brainer, right? This makes sense. How come your advisor doesn't tell you this? Do you think your advisor is capable of coming up with this strategy on their own? Um, do you think that your friends that you follow uh, or pick up trading advice, do you think that the dipshits on Reddit, um, do you think that anybody knows uh, that, that if you're taking any guidance from anybody, which you shouldn't be, um, is is constructing these type of ideas and plans and telling you how, what, and then doing it. I don't think so. Um, I'm going to give you a lesson. I'm going to give you results, and then I'm going to give you the rest of your day. Because uh, we got, I think that the golfers are coming up on the tenth hole here, so they're rounding the turn. Um, okay, got a little intense there for a second. Let's get back to the fun. Ah, I love that. Let's sail with it. RSI lesson. Put RSI on three months. Look at three months RSI. RSI gets chopped up over whatever period you're looking at it. So you can look at this over three months. This is Callum Petroleum here. If I look at CP, which I love, if you CPE, Callum Petroleum, I've got it here on this chart. Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah. So this is a three month chart. That means there's 90 periods in it. RSI is basing two standard deviations of the last 15 periods. If it's a monthly chart, the monthlies are going to give me days. If I'm looking at a five-day chart and I'm looking at 14 periods, my periods are going to be chopped up between days. If I'm looking at a one-day chart, it's going to be either minutes or hours or somewhere in between. If I'm looking at a one-year chart, it'll be months or weeks. It'll probably be it'll be weeks. That's the point here, guys. Um, I'm catching so much pushback. Oh, dude, I bought it in RSI. I was at 30. Well, yeah, you were looking at it over a month. You're looking at over a week. The best rule of thumb I can give anybody out there, this has made me the best, most progress as a trader over the last 12 years, hundreds of thousands of dollars, all kinds of mistakes, everything I'm learned straight from the heart. The best rule of thumb is look at three month RSI. If it drops below 30 and you already buy this, uh, already like the stock, like I like CPE, just buy it. It takes the emotion out of it. It takes the FOMO out of it. It takes the second guessing out of it. And it gives you a hypothesis to start with. This is scientific. It doesn't matter whether the hypothesis is right or not. But it gives you something better than just willy-nilly. Um, that's, that's CPE. Again, go ahead and buy CPE. <laughs> I like it. Um, but do it in the context of the plan I showed you before and you'll be golden. Okay. Um, one, one real quick thing here. I, I'm trying to talk soft and carry a big stick, as they say. Um, but I want to show you the performance of the ever bullish portfolios. Um, I'm going to show you this because this proves the entire mission of ever bullish. I'm one man in an office at home, trading pretty much full time, all full time, 
and very simply managing a portfolio uh, in the context for mid to long term holders for IRA money, very similar to what pretty much every advisor out there is doing. Um, I believe the investment industry is broken. You can read that story on my website if you click on the ever bullish origin story. But the point is, is that it doesn't take much. It's so cheap right now. You don't have to call somebody to buy a stock. You don't have to trust the newspaper the day after you buy something, what the price is. You don't have to pay exorbitant fees. There's almost no fees. That's why I laughed at all these people out there that are so fee conscious. It's almost nothing. This is, this is impossibly good. Go ahead and exploit it. Um, but the point is, is that you can buy a list of stocks. Um, the ever bullish one will start with 25 stocks. We've only made two trades and one rebalance this year. The ever bullish one portfolio is up 24.7%. I expected to beat the market. I, I require that I beat the market. I expected to beat the S&P 500 benchmark is what I'm calling the market. I expected this by about 4 to 5% at this point through the year. I'm up over 9% over it this year by picking 25 stocks, weighting them as appropriately with a forward-looking perspective on the market, um, making changes when I need to. Remember, I sold out of Bitcoin. Remember, we moved into Delta Airlines. These type of things, right? Very simple. I put small caps in there. I put CPE in there. Small cap oil stocks. They're not going to let you do that if you're at a mutual fund. And remember that you're paying for the, the guy that's standing at the coffee cooler. You're paying for all the marketing material. You're paying for the intern, $25 an hour to sit on the phone and explain to old ladies how to click buttons. You're paying for your dickhead boss um, that uh, is uh, just trying to make his dickhead boss happy. And that all pulls piles through to the main point that all managed accounts jobs are is to keep you in them whether they work or not for as long as they can so they can charge you fees. I charge you nothing, 75 bucks one time. You're your own daddy, you have agency over your own investment and I made you 24.7% in half a year. The Ever Bullish Balance portfolio. I'm gonna, Kitty's gonna pull out his claws right now. Ever Bullish Balance. I would go so far as to say that this is the most common asset mix in the world. The most common asset mix all time. Ever bullish balance, I'm running out of time, ever, and I don't want to lose this. Ever bullish balance portfolio is up 12%. The S&P balance index is up 8 I'm giving you half the risk of the market and 4%. 400 basis point alpha with zero trades by picking convertibles, which I told you I was going to do. High yield, which I told you I was going to do. Better bond funds than most that I told you I was going to do. And we did it. Why are you buying a mutual fund? Why are you buying anything else? It is that easy. I told you I was going to do it. I did it. I proved it. Ever bullish dividend up 17%. The market's up 14%. I didn't expect that either, but it has a 7.78% yield. I can go into more detail, but I'm running out of time. The best option trade is on Square. The best option trade is on Square at $240, and it's a $15 premium for September, okay? Go to the website to find the rest of this. Ever bullish, ever bullish one. Do yourself a favor, fire your manager, buy a portfolio, paper trade it, real trade it, whatever. Trust my knowledge, trust my passion, trust my gall to actually make this and challenge the investment industry. Tell your advisor, even if you like the guy, he's making his boss's boss happy. He's on the hamster wheel. He's got to click the buttons. He doesn't give a fuck about you. I do. Go buy it. Ever bullish, AFG, LFG, let's get rich. Louis Oosthuizen is going to win it, by the way.